I'm Sithrith. I'm Draculetta. I'm Mithelros. And you're listening to Radio Free Tyria, the Guild Wars 2 podcast for the casual crowd. This is the first full week since Heart of Thorns has released. Last episode, as you remember, we only had about 48 hours since the expansion released, so not not a whole lot going on. There's still not a whole lot of news out this week, just because, you know, I feel like a lot of the devs are maybe on vacation or at least just kind of not doing anything because, you know, expansion launch. It seems reasonable. So that's a thing. Um, but we did get... A update this week on the 27th. Um, they did a big update. Uh, they called it an iteration, I guess. And it had quite a lot of changes. Um, I mean, it was a lot of kind of bug fixes, server crashes, client crashes, like fixing stuff like that. Um, one really big thing that they did change was, as we mentioned last week, a lot of people were very upset about how long it was taking to unlock elite specializations. And they have now decreased the number of hero points that you need for to fully unlock an elite special specialization from 400 hero points down to 250. So that's a very big change. Uh, a lot of people are very happy, um, predictably, because you can't please everybody. Some people are still very upset about this change because reasons. I don't know. I think it's a lot more reasonable. Um, I nearly have Chronomancer unlocked now, so that's good. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know why anybody would complain about it. It was really, really high before. Unreasonably so, I think. So I'm pleased with it. And uh, yeah, that was that was good. They fixed some client crashes that were happening. A lot of people were having some issues. Client crashes, those have been fixed. They fixed various bugs in the new story and the maps. And uh, they've also made it so that some of the adventures can be run more often. Um, a lot of people were complaining, I guess, or upset that um, some of the adventures were kind of closed off a lot of the time because of extraneous other events going on. So they've updated that, which is good. Um, the adventures are definitely really nice. They're kind of addictive, like you start running them, and then it's just like, oh, I'll just try one more time. I'll get it this time. And you just end up doing them forever. But Athelros, um there's one little PvP change that I know that you're quite upset about. Uh, yeah. A little bit. A little um, bit. In the patch that they did do, they also mentioned that they were removing some of the... Um, uh, which ones were they now? I'm trying to find it. Yeah, they removed some of the amulets and runes from the game that they had added with Heart of Thorns. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of these are the Minstrel Amulet, the Rune of the Ogre, Rune of the Lich, Rune of the Pirate. Um, the one I'd actually used, I think I mentioned it last week, that mm -hmm. I found a pretty new build for my Bunker Support Guardian that worked really well. We actually did quite well with that combo. Um, I found it was the Minstrel Amir just provided pretty much the perfect set of stats for him. It has Vitality, which Guardians have very low base health, uh, so that's very useful. It has Toughness for obvious tankiness. Has healing power, so my heals are extra good. And I had concentration, which increases boon duration. Apparently, this was the stat that was actually broken the whole time, so it actually did nothing. But even that aside, it still was really good. And, and now it's gone. Now it's gone, yeah. Apparently, from what they've said, it was unhealthy gameplay. Which I don't um, understand. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, the the little bit of the patch notes, it says, PvP. Several PvP build components have been removed in order to promote healthy gameplay. Remove Minstrel Amulet. I don't understand how removing that promotes healthy gameplay or why it was quote-unquote unhealthy. It doesn't, like, like you said, I don't understand why a support build is bad for PvP. I thought their ideal was with the expansion moving away from the Berserker meta of just 
high, high damage builds for everybody and moving more towards build diversity. And I don't, I can't comprehend why this is bad for PvP. Yeah, apparently, for, I did a bit of reading up on this. It seems that with the new expansion, some of the more top tier, like competitive games, mm-hmm. um, the pace apparently had slowed down. Uh, I've come to that it was like 130, 125 timer wins. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure whether that's because of minstrels or because of just the various things that came with the expansion. Well, that's it's the thing. It's kind of hard to like pin that specifically on minstrels. I guess. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It's like there's, I don't know. It just seems really kind of backwards and weird because they they introduced the druid elite spec, which is. As they said, it's specifically a support and healing build, and yet they got rid of runes to support that play style. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, and the reason this may, makes it particularly hard for guardians specifically, because I believe this thing was also being used on druids, even oh, though yeah. maybe not that healing class, mm-hmm. um, is that guardians I mentioned have really low base health. Like I think it's twelve, thirteen thousand. Something like lady, that. Which I believe is the lowest of any class. Maybe it's tied with some other ones, but that's really low. And a lot of the times when I'm fighting in PvP, if you don't have something that increases your vitality via uh, runes or sigils, you just get bursted. No matter how, what boons you got on you, you just die really fast just because you have such low health. It doesn't matter if you're full health because you just die immediately. Mm. And there was almost no alternative stats that I, before this came out that I could use for it. I'm, I'm, I'm it stats. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I was using Cleric just because it had toughness and healing power on it. The only other option was one that had vitality, healing power, and precision. So there's always a wasted stat. Precision right. is useless on a Guardian that's full support because you do, do no damage anyway. Mm-hmm. So, and this like provided the three that were perfect for him. And now it's kind of just useless. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand either, and it's, it is too bad. I was hoping that they were gonna have more build diversity, but I guess it is more focused on just doing as much damage as possible, which is too bad. Eh? Yeah, and like, I don't even see the argument that there's like, I guess maybe people, people, people are arguing there's no counterplay to this, because like, I mean, if, I've experienced it in the PvP games myself if. You are on your own, or you're not coordinated enough with people like your teammates around you. Uh, like, minstrel build support class, at least for the Guardian, was pretty much useless on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can defend keeps okay, because you can obviously buff the NPCs around you. But aside from that, you just kind of don't die for a little bit, and then you eventually just get brought down via stun lock or whatever. Right. So, you know, I just, I just don't see it. I really yeah. don't see this whole perception that's incredibly toxic to have a full tank build class in PvP. I mean, even in Lotro, when I've seen some uh, classes do that, just build full as tanky as possible, they they still were doing that for years, so I don't see why Arianet uh, believes it's just incredibly harmful to the game to have him like that. Right. Or like another example you were Me- talking about earlier before we started uh, recording was mm-hmm. uh, League of Legends. There's, uh, you know, tank champions in that game as well. Yeah, like it's just a whole uh, section of champions. Mm-hmm. Just this is what they do. It's what they've always done. It's been right. like that for years. I don't see the issue with it in this game, aside from perhaps maybe like in uh, in line with this whole berserker meta thing of if you're not doing damage, then you're not contributing to anything. Like that's the whole thing with sort of the world bosses and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's no and the group content in general. Like there's not the Holy Trinity thing they removed means that everyone is pretty much out for themselves. And if you're support, then you're not out for yourself, which makes it pretty much counter to everything that Arena has tried to do. Maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't seem logical to me. Yeah. I don't I don't think it makes much sense either. Maybe there's something we're missing. I know there was apparently... There's another stat combination in the game called Nomads, which is toughness, healing, power, and vitality. And I know that they specifically didn't add that to PvP either. And I don't, I wasn't able to find out why. If you've ever tried to research like historical changes to very specific things in MMOs, it's very, very hard to find traces of stuff. 
unless you have like specific links to threads. But I yeah, so I I couldn't figure out why they decided not to add nomads besides people you know just commenting on forum threads or something saying it's OP, which isn't helpful. Like why is it OP? Yeah, I don't... yeah. Pretty much just my end point of this is there's already and have been for a very long time builds with like, amulets and stats in general mm-hmm. that you let you go full pure damage. You well, know, that's the thing. It's like there's precision ferocity. You've got that. You have condition damage once if you want that. Mm-hmm. It's perfectly tuned for you, whatever you're looking for, if you want damage. Well, and that's the thing. It's like the the current meta, and it has been for months and months in PvP, is the da- dual dagger wielding elementalist. They can output just ridiculous amounts of damage extremely fast. That is the PvP meta. Like That's why in some of the like higher tier tournaments, they had to put a cap on how many... Uh, of a specific class you could have at a time in a team, because otherwise people were just running five Dagger Dagger Elementalists in teams and just wrecking things. So if that's a thing that is meta and fine and allowed to continue, I don't understand why Minstrel runes and Amulets or whatever aren't okay. So, yeah. PvP. What are you gonna do? So yeah, that's... um. That's that. Another thing that happened this week was they, f- people, I guess, finally figured out the recipe for Night Fury. Now, if you don't know what this is, we didn't really talk about it last week because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> but, but, uh, I do now. Basically, with Heart of Thorns slash the Halloween update, I guess, it's mostly about Halloween. Um, there was a new Mystic Forge recipe called Night Fury, and basically it gives you a shoulder skin. You can pick whether it's light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, so it doesn't matter. Um, obviously, the idea is to throw four certain things into the Mystic Forge, and you get these Night Fury shoulders, and basically it's like you get this continuous swarm of bats flying around you. So a lot of people are really into that. Drac, I know you were really into that until you figured out what all you have to do to get these shoulders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you were like, oh, bats, cool, vampire stuff. And then it was like, how much uh, How much gold is it to, to get all the ingredients? Uh, the total for it is 4,399 gold. Yeah, that's legendary weapon level gold. Oh, yeah, that's like stupid amount of gold like, to craft just what is pretty much just a cosmetic piece of armor, basically. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah, that's. I'm pretty sure that's more than some legendary weapons cost so it's ugh, it's it's steep and the reason it's so steep is because it requires some items that are time limited they're only available during halloween so i mean you know people are selling them high right now and they're they're probably only going to go up in price once halloween is over and the you know source is gone basically uh, and then there's also some other components of it that are very, very expensive. You need 250 Mystic Coins, which weren't too expensive before, but now that this is a thing, they're super expensive. Um, you need 250 Charged Lodestones, which uh, before Heart of Thorns, I was pretty, I'm pretty sure was like two or three gold per Lodestone, and you need an entire stack of them. So good luck with that. And it's just, it's ridiculous. It's super expensive. I had, when I saw the skin for it, I had a brief notion, oh, I should put these on my Char Necro. And then I was like, oh, wait, I still haven't even finished this legendary weapon that I'm making. I'm not going to do that. But a lot of people are very, very interested in making these shoulders. Um, It's kind of funny because it's like, oh, they're shoulders, but there's no actual shoulder armor. Like, it's just the bats flying around. I don't know why they decided to make them shoulders, but whatever. That's a thing, I guess. So uh, we'll put the the recipe link in the show notes so that if you are crazy enough, you can attempt to make Night Fury. If you do, I'd like to see some pictures of whatever outfit you put together for it. Um, also, another thing I just want to talk about real quick. Uh, it is uh, if if you're in if you participated in the game internet gaming community for a while, you'll know about this thing called Extra Life which is basically streamers and all sorts of other people who are interested uh, can sign up for this thing called Extra Life, and they stream for a certain amount of time, and they get people to donate to a children's hospital near them. So one of the developers of ArenaNet, Lester Bloom, is going to be doing a 24-hour 
live Extra Life stream, and uh, he's going to be bringing in all sorts of other developers from ArenaNet. Um, so for a while, he's going to be doing stuff in the jungle maps. He's going to be doing a couple hours of PvP with the PvP developers. He's going to be streaming some fractals uh, with the five, with him and the four others that worked on redoing Heart of Thorns fractals. So that that could be pretty cool. Um, going to be doing some world v world. He's basically just doing everything in the game <laughs> in this twenty four hour stream. So I think that even if you're not, I mean, you should donate to children's hospitals because that's the good thing to do. But even if you've already donated to someone else or whatever, I definitely recommend going and checking out that stream. It's going to be on November 7th, um, just because, just from a game point of view, that could be really interesting to watch. Um, so I guess uh, we'll get to our continued Heart of Thorns impressions, because that's a thing that's ongoing. Um, one thing that we found out was that guild halls are massive. They are really, really big. I did not realize how big they were. Um, if you might remember, I think at the start of last episode, I said, oh, there's six maps. Because I thought, I looked at the map, like the world map, and I saw these six, like, level 80 zones. But two of them are actually guild halls. They are the size of an entire map. I didn't realize, I don't know why I didn't realize that guild halls are that big. Guild halls are the size of an entire actual map. It's so mind-blowing. Uh, we kind of accidentally stumbled into one because one of the guilds I'm in has a guild hall now. And it, I was just totally blown away by how huge they are. And I think it's, I just, I don't know. It was just so crazy. I couldn't believe how, how big it was. Um, and then, of course, the first thing we did after that was we tried to figure out how to get our own guild hall. But apparently we have to do, like, work or something before we do that. We don't we don't have enough influence in our guild. Uh, apparently we have to do guild missions before we have enough influence. Which I guess works out. Um, because I know, Drek, you don't have Heart of Thorns yet. So I guess um, that gives us time, though, to work on things. The good thing, though, I was looking at the revamped guild missions tab or whatever that's in the, the guild thing. And basically, it, the the revamped guild missions is there's a whole bunch of options, like, some are really easy, like, oh, you and two, like, up to, you know, minimum of three guild members do a certain number of PvP games in a certain amount of time. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought they were changing the way that worked. Yeah, so there's, to like... To make guild missions a little easier for smaller guilds, so... Yeah. That's something we will have to look at. Yeah, I mean, like, the the PvP thing, like, just us three could do that. Like, you, I think it's, you do three PvP games in, like, two hours or something like that. Which is easy, because PvP matches are 15 minutes each. So, like, yeah, I definitely really like that they've made the guild missions easier. Another thing that's really good is just looking at the guild tab, um, like, or, like, the guild window. They've really made it a lot easier, because, like, you're, like, looking around at all the different things and... There's like a little guide section of the guild window that tells you stuff. So I was like, oh, you need a certain amount of favor to be able to unlock your guild hall in addition to the 100 gold or whatever. And then in the guild window, there's a little thing that's like, what is favor? And you click on it and it tells you what favor is and how to get it. So they made it a lot easier to figure out guild upgrading stuff, which is good because I was kind of lost before. I know... Our guild, we kind of just let other people upgrade it for us because we were just like, I don't know what's happening <laughs> with the guild stuff. Yeah. But yeah, guild halls are pretty cool. I, it's gonna be a while before we get one because uh, we are a small and not super active guild. But maybe we'll work on that because yeah, with the the missions being easier for smaller guilds, I think it might be easier for us to do stuff. And they seem to have stuff, like, all over, not just, like, oh, do this one specific PvE mission. It's like, oh, go do PvP or go do whatever. So there's options, which is nice. And um, another thing in Heart of Thorns that we experienced a bit more of, I think we touched on it last week, but something that's not great is snipers. The Mordrum snipers are pretty obnoxious. I know a lot of people... Um, in one of the betas, I think they kind of disappeared or they weren't doing very much damage and a lot of people were upset that they were gone. 
And I don't know why people would be upset that these things were gone, because they are so obnoxious and unfun. Um, basically what these Mordrum snipers do is they do a huge amount of damage in a single shot. And when they do do the shot, it leaves this big, long, flaming kind of trail on the ground. And if you're standing on it or walk over it or whatever, it does a ton of damage to you again. So you can be hit for a ton of damage, and then because obviously you're standing on the line of the shot, you then take even more damage. You can be one shot by these things if you're not careful. And that's pretty often. And it's not fun. And I don't know why people like these super weirdly hard things, but that seems like a common theme in the Guild Wars 2 community. I know on our previous podcast, uh, we had a whole episode where we complained about a certain fight in the living story being too hard, and people told us that we were wrong, basically. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a common theme. I don't under- I really don't understand this push for just stupid, hard, like, oh, if you don't dodge at this very specific time, you'll die forever thing. I don't understand that. Yeah. Like, the... I think the really annoying thing about snipers is two things I actually mean, I haven't made complete with. One is that their initial shot usually will either do at least half your health or just straight kill you, mm-hmm. depending on how tanky you are. The And, you know, that's, like, fine, because you can usually see them, usually see them charge it up. Right. But then... After they do the shot, it leaves that old trail that if you stand on it, it does about a third of your health per tick. And because it just hit you, you are standing on it to start with yeah, by so default. you're pretty much going to take one off the bat, no matter what. Right. So that's that's one complaint. Just having the trail seems a bit overdone. Mm-hmm. The other one, and that's this is the one that kind of makes it an issue in general, is that they stealth a lot. Right. Like, at least maybe every, say, every five to ten seconds, they'll do it. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Around about. So not only will they stealth, they will shoot you pretty much from stealth. So a lot of the time you won't even see where they are or where it's going to hit you. And it's just really obnoxious. Yeah. Like, I get having challenge, but then there's just... Like, it's not even fun. Especially when there's, oh god, like, times we fought maybe three or four of them at once in, Ugh. like, group events. I mean, you, you, don't, you have nowhere to stand. To be fair, it could be, again, like, we are playing this content on Mesmers, so we're kind of squish. I don't know if that's part of the problem or not. I mean, it didn't seem like it when we've done that before. Pretty much everyone we, like, that one time there was four of them, I think. That's true. We they spent a lot of time. <laughs> deleted them. <laughs> they just deleted them. Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time resing people, I feel like, in the new maps. There's always somebody dead somewhere. Yeah. I think they should either look into nerfing the, the trail so that it either doesn't stay as long or doesn't do as much damage, or nerf the stealth. Mm-hmm. Because it's having both on one NPC type is really, really obnoxious. Yeah. Like the one, I think I think it was a him. It might have been someone else that actually 1v2'd us, and it was a normal mob. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Yeah. He got slightly lucky with like crits or something, but still, like it was really bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was not. It was not great. So I think there's there's definitely a lot of very frustrating mobs, but most of them, like they're not gonna one shot you. So like I can deal with the difficulty of their mechanics. Like smoke scales are frustrating, but they're not really gonna one shot you. So it's like I can I can handle that. I'm not, I think a lot of the problem is a lot of the Guild Wars 2 community sees someone saying like, oh, I think this is too hard, and they think that they're claiming that you should be able to just push an easy button to complete content. I don't think that's what anybody's asking. We're just asking for it to be a bit more reasonable. I'm, I, I don't like being dead all the time. It makes it frustrating. So, yeah. That's, that's Snipers. Um, also the music in Heart of Thorns is really good. I don't know why I didn't realize this, but apparently, um, Jeremy Soul is not doing the soundtrack for Guild Wars 2 anymore. Uh, there is a new composer doing the music, and I love the music. Um, it's really good. I really, really like it. Um, go check out the Guild Wars 2 SoundCloud page, because they've been uploading the Heart of Thorns soundtrack there, and you can listen to it, and it's really good. So yeah, I think, I think that's about all my Heart of Thorns stuff. Um, mostly just been doing that this week. But I've also been leveling my Revenant in Edge of the Mists World v. World stuff. 
because that's a super fast way to level characters. Um, alternatively, if you're looking for ways to level characters quickly, apparently if you do the Mad King's Labyrinth for the Halloween event, that can also be very, very quick leveling. The problem, though, is being able to get into a map that has a commander or, like, a zerg of people running around doing the events. If you get into a Labyrinth map with nobody on it, just, you know, just mobs, obviously, it's not a very quick leveling experience. But the problem is the same thing goes for Edge of the Mists. Like, basically, you're very reliant on having somebody on the map being tagged up as a commander and running a whole group of people through already. So it kind of sucks um, because, yeah, being reliant on other people to level that quickly is not great because sometimes it's, you know, you got to wait around for a while for one to show up. But when one does show up in both Edge of the Mists and Halloween Labyrinth thing... You can get about a level every 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how fast the Zerg train is going. So if you really want to level something very quickly, that's definitely what I recommend. But one problem I did come across while doing World v. World and Edge of the Mists is that some people are total jerks. I was in Edge of the Mists, and basically with Edge of the Mists, you can bring in really low-level characters, obviously, like I said, because you can level characters there. Somebody rolled a new character with a major Heart of Thorns plot spoiler as the character name. So I got a certain character's death spoiled for me. So thanks for that. Um, was not a great thing to see. I was not very pleased. Um, so thanks for that. Are you sure it's actually true? Uh, yeah. Because it's, it's a very likely thing to happen. I'm kind of surprised they even let you name a character something to that effect. I mean, you would think it would automatically say, no, you can't use a name unless they did it in a way that it wasn't actually the name, but you could tell it was a name. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was slightly misspelled. Ah, gotcha. It was like, character names, dead, was the character's name. So thanks. If you're the kind of person who thinks that's funny, I hate you. Just, you know, heads up. So that's my rant. <laughs> um, hopefully none of you come... like. And the thing is, it's like, you can avoid spoilers as much as you want. Like, a lot of people post, like, screenshots, and you can avoid screenshots, or, you know, obviously podcasts where they talk about stuff, or you can even turn off map chat so that you don't see map chat um, people talking about spoilers. But like, if you just come across a character with a name like that, it really sucks, because there's not anything you can do well, about yeah, it. Oh, no. yeah, unless... Yeah, there's even nothing. blocking them, like, you'll still see their name. Yeah, that is pretty crappy. So, yeah. I was pretty mad. I don't want to say too much about it, because, you know, spoilers. <laughs> but, yeah. Spoiler alert, I was really mad. Um, so I think that's that's about it. I don't know what else you guys have been doing this week, or if there's anything else you want to discuss. Yeah. I think I've run it enough. You've had your say about PvP amulets? Yeah. So stupid. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I feel you on that. Well, I guess that's about it for this week. Um, again, it was kind of a shorter stream because there's just not a whole lot of news. Just because, you know, expansion being out and stuff. Um, 